Hi, so in this video, we will try to do some more with QTP output values. So in this example, with for a quick recap, we entered some values into the mortgage calculator and clicked on calculate. And then we captured the output value and we uh, checked that value with a conditional statement right here. Okay, so let me change this back from 945 to 944 and save it. So let's try to run this script and before we run this let's let me change one of the values. Let's change hmm, let's change let's change the principal the principal for the loan amount which is right now 80,000 let me change it to 100,000 That means that I am getting the whole value as a loan. I'm not putting any cash forward. I'm not doing 20,000 forward like we were before. So let's change this and do a debug run. So in the conditional statement, it is checking for $944.89. Let's do a debug run and see what happens. So step in two, hit OK. F11, F11 again, or that's the quick, the shortcut. So it navigated to, to the website. Let me minimize. It navigated to mortgagecalculator.com, or .org actually. Step into, step into, step into, step into. So if I go back, I'll see that the loan amount the loan amount is now one hundred thousand. Now I step into again, and now it's checking the output value. And it's taking a longer time. And it's not writing in this column because it's checking for nine hundred and forty four dollars and eighty nine cents. But do we have $944.89 in the application? Let's see. So as we can see, now the monthly payment is $1,155. It's now higher. It's higher than $944 because, and as we can see, QTP gave us its error saying, cannot identify $944. So click on stop. So it did not find the expected value. So we're intending for an output value so that we can read anything that comes up in, in this area right here. Any text that comes up in this area. So we don't actually care about the value. If the input is changed, then we're supposed to capture the, the new value here, the edited value. We're supposed to capture the runtime value, whatever it gets, whatever gets generated here. But right now, the benefit of using the output value, why is that not happening right now though? So we are saying that it's not happening in this case. Otherwise, we could just create a checkpoint instead of an output value. So the reason it did not happen in this case, or it did not capture, it is still trying is still looking for that constant value, right? So it's looking for the constant $944 value instead of just checking for anything, anything that is presented in this area. The reason is because we inserted a standard checkpoint, okay? So let's take this off, this whole line. So I'm taking the line that creates the output value. Let's record in my application. I still have my application open. I did not close. Now click on insert, output value. 
and click on text output value instead of standard. So I'm interested in this text right here. This dollar sign 1155.07, but anything that is presented in this area. So I click insert output value, test, uh, text output value, and with my hand signed, I click on this area. And as you can see, I get the text output value properties. Here's the summary. The summary says output of the text that is displayed between repayment summary and monthly payment. That means capture the value that is presented between this text and this text. So what do we have between this and that? This is the text that we have. So QTP has identified, it is telling us that we will capture the value between that is presented between repayment summary and monthly payment. And then we will put the value into a sheet. So you can say modify, just like we did before. Click modify. Let's name it. We can name it whatever we want. So let's name it text output. So this is a column name in the global sheet. Click on OK and click on OK again. All right. Now let me stop the recording. And I can see that a new column has been generated with the name text output. So that means for this output checkpoint, for this output checkpoint, it will capture the output between this and this text, between these two texts. And it will put that value in here, right? So what I'll do now, I will change, I will change the value for this variable, for output value. So at this time, I'll tell this value to read the data from this column. So we'll read this column in the global data sheet. So I'll change the name to text underscore output. All right. And the output value that I'm expecting should be because I let me see how much is that. So the output that I'm value is uh, that I'm expecting is eleven hundred and fifty five dollars. So eleven hundred fifty five dollars and seven cents. So the output has changed because because we have changed one of our input values. The input of loan amount is right now one hundred thousand instead of eighty thousand like it was before. So let's save it. Let's try to run this and see what happens. We're not doing a debug run, so we'll just see everything happening in very quickly. Goes to mortgage calculator, tries to enter the values, clicks on calculate. And now it's checking, checking the output column. As we can see, it does say 1155. $1,155.07 is a runtime value for this column. And in the conditional statement, we are expecting that. We are expecting that same value. So we'll check the print log. And the print log has printed a pass. So it has, it has found this value. It got the expected value. And so because of that, it wrote pass, right? So how do we know that it is capturing whatever value that we provide? Because last time we had a standard output value and it was checking for a constant output value. But this time it should check for, for any value in the runtime and a dynamic value. So for this dynamic value, let's, let's try to change, change our values. Let me put a breakpoint for line number nine. So after I click calculate, I'll put a breakpoint. 
let's change the interest rate this time. So from 4.8, let's make it 6.0. 6 let's put this interest rate as 6.0. And we have our break point. Okay, so let's run it up until this point. So it tries to enter the values. Let me go back to the application because at this point it will not execute anything unless I hit run again because I have a breakpoint before line number 12. So basically, it entered all those values, and at this time, it changed the interest rate to 6.0 on the interest rate, and it did calculate. And right now, I have a different value, which is $1,214, right? Let's click on Run. Let's execute the rest of the run, and see the rest of the script. And as we can see, QTP did not fail. So we were checking for a, a constant output last time, and it did not find that constant value in QTP. So when it stopped, it stopped with an error message. This time it is checking for a dynamic value. And the reason we have a fail is because in this conditional statement, we are still expecting the old value of $1,155.07. But this time we had a different value, so we still got a fail. So in the last step, let's try to get a pass by changing the expected value. So I didn't really see the check for the output. So let's check the output for putting the 6.0% interest rate. So go back to the application. So I scroll down and entered all of that correctly, 6.0 interest rate. So this time the output is $1,214.37, right? So let's put that, click on stop, and let's put that amount, put the new expected amount, 1000 what is it, $1,214.37. Good. Let me close the browser. Let me take off the breakpoint. And with everything cleared, let's run again. So this time it should put 6.0 interest rate and it should check for the updated output value, which is $1,214 and, um, and some cents. So let me make it bigger. I'm going to maximize it. Entered all these values and is now checking for it's checking for this new expected value. I close the browser. Okay, and let's check our test log and this time is pass. So, this time we have a pass because we did update the value for our updated inputs. We found the expected value. So, this is how you can play with output values. The reason we've done like four videos with output values is is because it's it's really important as a basic a baseline thing when you're testing a runtime value. This is very important. So we make some intentional mistakes so that we can see how to correct for them. And we're now using a text output value instead of a standard output value. So now you know how to utilize. Uh, the output values and the benefits of using the output values, how you can use the output values um, for your benefit in executing different types of tests. So from now on, if you need to check some values in the application, some runtime values, you can use output values. And so in the future, in the next video, we will start looking descriptive programming and uh, the scripting part of QTP. So I'll see you again in the next video with descriptive programming.